coupling spatial and ocular coding in V1. Let's first get some intuition by comparing the ocularity coding and color coding using only two cone types. In color coding, we have red and green cone inputs and they are decorrelated into luminance and chromatic inputs. In ocular coding, we have analogously left eye input SL and right eye input SR, and they are also decorrelated into summation and difference uh, images. For the input signal correlation in the color space, the correlation is between cone type C at location X1 and another signal at cone type C prime at location X2, and we said that this whole correlation can be factorized as a product between two factors. One takes care of the correlation in color dimensions, cone C and C prime, and another takes care of correlation in spatial dimensions, x1 and x2 as the elements. And now in ocular spatial uh, correlation, it will be a correlation between a signal in IE at x1, so E is an eye, left eye or right eye, and signal E prime at x2, and E prime can be left eye or right eye. And this whole correlation in eye of origin, ocular, and space cannot be factorized into two factors, one for ocular space, ocular dimension, and the other for spatial dimension. For the conceptual coding steps coupling color and space, we have taken advantage of this factorization in a correlation to show that the coding can be done in these separate steps. First, decorrelate in color into uh, chromatic and luminance channels, and then do parallel spatial coding in the luminance and chromatic channels into these multiband uh, in each of these bands. And then we multiplex in the color dimensions into the final two output units. And from these output units, we get the filter for the red cone input and a spatial filter for the green cone inputs as summation or difference between these two Gabor filters, one for the luminance signals and one for the chromatic signals. It turns out that these same conceptual steps can be analogously taken for this coupling the ocularity dimension and spatial dimension, even though these correlations do not factorize. So therefore, we decorrelate first in the ocular space into these two spatial images, then do parallel multi-scale encoding in a summation channel and a difference channel and get their Gabor filters and then add them and subtract these Gabor filters for these two channels to get our spatial filters for the left eye input and the right eye input. In color space coding, we have shown that neurons will have different sensitivity profiles, spatial profiles for the red cones input and green cones input. And these are some example neurons and uh, many different varieties. And in ocular space coding, we can look at this analogously, but we have a special interest in the binocular spatial disparity between the left eye input and right eye inputs. Because an object that is further or closer than the fixation point has its location in the two eyes differ from each other. So it has one location in the left eye and a location in the right eye. And this spatial difference is the binocular disparity and represents the object depths in space. For example, in this neuron, the preferred location for the red cone input is slightly shifted from the preferred location for the green cone's input. And in stereo vision, imagine this is for stereo vision, then it will be a disparity between the, between the preferred location for the left eye's input and right eye input. And this cell is then sensitive to this particular shift, which is a particular binocular disparity. This slide gives a brief outline of the mathematical background for the analogy between color and ocular coding when we couple them with spatial coding. 
Now the input vector is 2n dimensional for n spatial locations, x1, x2, all the way to xn, and for two eyes, the left eye and the right eye. And so therefore, the signal correlation matrix is 2n by 2n, made of four matrices, four submatrices, like outlined here. And each submatrix is a spatial correlation matrix. For example, in this submatrix, it's a spatial correlation between the pixel in the left eye and another pixel in the left eye. Here is a correlation between the pixel in the left eye and another one in the right eye. For example, one pixel at location x1, another pixel at location x2. And here is one pixel in the right eye, another in the left eye. And here is a correlation between two pixels, uh, both in the right eye. Now, each submatrix is an n by n toplex matrix because it's, uh, it's always talking about a spatial correlation. That means in each matrix, for example, this one, the correlation depends only on the spatial displacement between the two pixels. Now, even though because these correlations are not factorizable, that means this submatrix is different from that by more than a scale factor. Anyway, since each submatrix is a topless matrix, we have learned previously that each then can be diagnosed by a Fourier transform in space. And this transform is this matrix KO superscript X means a transform in space. This means each row vector in this matrix, and this row vector is a Fourier wave, is an eigenvector for each of these submatrices. And so this can be written out that this way. So this is the submatrix acting onto the kth row vector in this matrix is equal to exactly the corresponding eigenvalue onto this eigenvector, onto this row vector. And here each submatrix is written in this form like R S E E prime. E E prime means which submatrix, yeah? So here is E E prime equal to L L and E E prime equal to L R and here is R L and R R. Yeah. So now if we focus on the Fourier wave K, one K at a time, one frequency at a time, and then um, this two by two blocks of submatrices can be then written as a two by two correlation matrix only in ocular dimension. Yeah. And different frequency k's in there can be now separated into different two by two correlation matrices like this one. Now this value is the correlation between the Fourier amplitude in the left eye and the Fourier amplitude in the right eye for the same frequency k. This value is the same correlation symmetric. And these are the self correlations within the left eye or within the right eye. There's no correlation between the amplitudes of different frequencies, uh, and whether it's in the same eye or in the different eyes. So if these self-correlation values are the same, we have learned that this matrix can be diagnosed by a 45 degree rotation in this two-dimensional ocular space, just like we did there, taking the left and right eye basis to the summation and difference basis. Therefore, this 2n dimensional input vector whose components are correlated by this correlation matrix, uh, it can be they can be decorrelated by uh, first doing a spatial decorrelation by a Fourier transform and then do the ocular space decorrelation by a 45 degree rotation. Or one can do the other way around first for by the 45 degree rotation in the two dimensional ocular space and then do the decorrelation in spatial space. And this Fourier transform, in fact, is a n dimensional, is a rotation in an n dimensional spatial space. And the results are the Fourier components in a summation channel and a difference channel. And each Fourier component is for a particular frequency, k1, k2, etc. Now these are the correlated Fourier components. Now we can just do the general steps in efficient coding. We have learned first by again control to each of these components, and then we do multiplexing. And the multiplexing could be done, for example, 
first multiplexing in space and then multiplexing in spatial dimension and then multiplexing in the ocular ocularity dimension and then we get our outcome as O1 and O2 populations. Therefore, we can use analogously the same conceptual steps that we use for spatial color coding to get our spatial ocular coding. In particular, you start with the left and right eye images, you decorrelate them to the summation and difference images, and then you apply V1 multi-scale coding on each of them in parallel. You get these spatial filters, the Agarbo filters on the summation image or the difference image, and then you multiplex in ocular space back into this, and this could be, for instance, using the inverse of this decorrelation matrix. And if you do that, this will be the outcome for two populations of encoding units, O1 and O2, and they are the summation of these two or the difference of these two. Now, if you write these out, each O1 and O2 in terms of left eye or right eye input rather than the summation difference input, this will be the outcome, O1 or O2, as a function of left eye input and right eye input, and therefore this should be the filter for the left eye input, therefore there is the field shape for left eye, and this eye, this one show the, for the right eye input. And to get what they are, we need to know what this k plus k minus is, and we can just write them out as Gabor filters with the gain, depending on what is the scale s, okay, and therefore what is the uh, central frequency for these um, Gabor filters, therefore we get their gains according to these gain control curves, and plug them in, we can find out what should be the Gabor filter for the left eye input, and that for the right eye input, then we can see how they differ in terms of their uh, spatial on center, on field, and off field, therefore we can get that binocular disparity of the neurons, and we can also compare their amplitudes to know whether the two eyes have the same sensitivity for each neuron or different sensitivity for the neurons or even uh, opposing and therefore getting binocular and monocular cells or uh, opponent cells.